This is section 3-1-2, Equations and Equalities, and we're going to actually take a look at solving equations graphically. And so today you guys are going to use a graphing utility to solve the equations, and we're going to examine extraneous solutions within algebraic methods to solve equations. So to solve equations graphically, you enter each side of the equation as a graph. The point of intersection is going to represent the solution and depending on the way that the equation is represented to us, you know, it's usually talking about the x value. And if the graphs do not intersect, there is no real solution. So the first thing you're going to do is, let's say, if I have the square root of 3x minus 2 equals x, you're going to enter each side of the equation as a function into Desmos. So f of x equals, there's the left side g of x equals there's the right side. And you could do this with any graphing utility, it doesn't necessarily have to be Desmos. I also use the notation f of x equals, you could also just say y equals and y equals. Then you're going to examine the graph, so you're going to look at what the graph looks like to see where the graphs have intersected. So I kind of zoomed in a little bit to where the graphs it looks like there's an intersection going on there, intersection going on there. And then you're going to highlight over to that and you're going to click on it, click, click. And when you click over to the intersections, it's going to show you the points in which they actually intersect. And then the solutions are going to be those x values. Remember, because in my original equation that I have established here, the only variable I have is x. And that's what I'm looking for here is the x variable. So this is going to be 1 and this is going to be 2. Um, even if I replace these with y, say if I said 3y minus 2 equals y, the way that it's being set up, it's this first value that we're looking for, okay? But we're just keeping it as x just for that. But. So let's find the solution to this following equation. So just wanted to show you, I graphed this side here, graphed that side there, and then there it is on Desmos. And so I clicked on the two points and it gives me the solution. So the solution is negative 1.414 and positive 1.414. Then this one here, I graphed this side, so there's f of x equals x squared plus five, and then I have a g of x equals three. Now notice, they did not intersect. So that means I would say that there are no solutions to this graph. Now there is going to, well, there are no real solutions to the graph. Later on in this class, we're gonna talk about that there technically could be a solution to this, but it's going to be a non-real solution. Now the last thing I kind of want to end this and the lesson tomorrow is going to show this a little bit further, but depending on our exponents, it gives us some insight to how many solutions our equation can have. And so if you were to add up the exponents for the x values and the y values. So like in this one here, I did x squared and y squared. So that's four, two plus two is four. That number there is typically gonna be the highest number of solutions. Actually, sorry, not typically. It's, you can't get a number of solutions higher than that. It won't happen. And so in this instance, x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared, that's four, right? x squared, y squared, that's four. And so the maximum number of solutions I can have is four. Now that doesn't guarantee that there's going to be four solutions. It's just some insight as to uh, how many solutions that there could be possibly. To close today's lesson, basically we solved equations by graphing them. We took the left side, represented it as a function, entered the right side, represented it as a function, found where they intersected and where they intersected informed us of what our solution is going to be. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.